This is a constructed handheld shear vane. It is used for measuring the shear strength of cohesive soils. Uh, when you use one, you have to ensure that it is calibrated with the green sticker. There's one here on the bottom. Uh, once again, it has the unique ID number, the last calibration date and the next calibration date. Um, this is the torque head. It's a little spring-loaded dial that when the soil shears or fails, it records the highest last reading. At the other end, you have the blade. Uh, it's important to give this a quick visual inspection before you use it. It should be straight and there shouldn't be any damage to the blade. You also have a calibration chart here that is unique to each torque head and blade. Uh, this converts the units on the dial to KPA. When you use this, you usually use it down a, a borehole, like a hand auger. You can also use it at ground level. It's important that the soil is cohesive. Um, for example, you do not use it in gravels and you do not use it in sands. Uh, when you take a measurement, you take two measurements. First is the peak and the second is the residual. One thing to remember is how often you take these. If you're doing a hand auger, sometimes you might have to stop the hand auger and do this test down hole and then you might have to do it at a frequency of every 200 millimetres, every 300 millimetres or whatever the engineer has specified. To take a reading, you have to push the vein tip into the soil at least twice the distance of the vein blade. Uh, it's about 70 to 80 millimetres. You don't want to push it in as far as the extension rods because that will give you false readings. And if you don't push it in far enough, that can also give false readings as the readings will be affected by the disturbance of the auger. When the soil is very stiff, sometimes you can struggle to push the vein blade into the soil. Uh, if you're struggling, don't apply too much pressure. Simply record UTP. It stands for unable to penetrate. Be sure not to load the uh, spring up with a value higher than what's on the dial. This will cause damage to the spring. There are two different ways to fitting the vein blade to the torque head. If you just wanted to shear veins at ground level, the vein blade just screws into the torque head. Just screw it in until it's finger tight and then use spanners to tighten up the rest. This will avoid damage to the spring. Alternatively, if you want a shear vein at depth, you need to fit this adapter here. It screws into this. From here, the torque head can screw into the extension rod. Here I am taking the peak value. You spin the dial uh, clockwise at a speed of one revolution per minute. So here I go. It's getting pretty exciting. We're at 40. 50. 54, 60, 75, Mark, check this out. Ninety six. Ninety six. It's failed at ninety six. You know that because you keep spinning the dial, but the uh, little arrow stays the same. We now take the re residual strength. We do that by remoulding the sample. We do this by rotating the dial five times at a revolution of about 10 seconds. Say we've done it. You then reset this to zero and you continue again quite slowly. This value should always be lower than the peak value.
it's just failed. 